Hi, welcome to How I Became a Theosophist. This is a special Summer National Conference 2012 edition. We're outside because the place is a buzz. All the rooms inside are being used for various proceedings. People are cutting grass around us. Um, and Doris Wallach, I'm you saying your name correctly? Yes, you are. Doris Wallach, new board member, has been kind enough to amidst her busy schedule to grant us a few minutes. So Doris, welcome. Thank you, Dan. And so we always kind of start with, um, what is your favorite color? We don't really. <laughs> but what is your favorite color? My favorite color is blue. Oh, <laughs> fitting. Um, and even more importantly, um, how did you come to the Theosophical Society? I was introduced to the Theosophical Society, Dan, by my aunt, Florence Metz, who is right here in the Chicago area. And, and this was when you were pretty young, a teenager? I was a teenager. Um, so it seems, based on my own experience and the teenagers I've interacted with in the last week or two, that that's pretty, it's, a, it's a pretty unusual for a teenager to be interested in this kind of material, um, the depth of this material. So how was it that you were interested in it at I such a young age? I think at 15, yeah. what attracted me to Theosophy was the love of life. Yeah. And learning about vegetarian food. Okay. So that was my inroad. Okay. My aunt was a theosophist yeah. and vegetarian. Yeah. And that was one of her first things that she did is become a vegetarian. And and I know that you're uh, active back home. Could you tell us Detroit a little bit Lodge. In, in Detroit Lodge? And what mm -hmm. kind of things do you do with the lodge? I have been the secretary at the Detroit Lodge for probably about 15 years. Okay. And you mentioned to me that the Detroit Lodge, I think, has a meditation, uh, a weekly meditation. Yes, we do. Which I find interesting. Um, and that's once a week, right? That's correct. Once a week. And you get a pretty good turnout. Anywhere from 8 to 12 people. Um, and so every, every week you meet to meditate. And then you also do other things during the week. We have an open forum on Wednesday where people bring their questions. It's an influencer's class. And on Tuesday, we have a secret doctrine class that is no longer a members meeting. It's okay. now open to members and non-members, friends of the TS. Okay. And now you're even busier because now you're a national board member. And in your, what has that been like so far? I know it's early in the game. Well, it's, there's a lot to learn about the finances of the society and how the finances finances determine what happens with all the departments. Yeah. So I've learned about all the departments and yeah. headquarters. Yeah. Um, and the the sort of poetic question that I ask people all the time is what does theosophy mean to you? For me, theosophy has been really a transforming experience because it's given me an opportunity to practice brotherhood in a deeper way, yeah. have a appreciation for people of all races, yeah. all creeds, all religions. I have a new respect for world religions that I never would have gotten outside of the society. Have heard many talks on world religions, have gone and visited other synagogues and temples and mosques. I would have never done that if I was not a member of the Theosophical Society. That sounds great. Uh, this is a surprise question. <laughs> How do you think we can get more people to know about the Theosophical Society? I think one of the things that you're doing already is your website, yeah. having the webinars, yeah. having the e-newsletters, and now that you can go on and you can learn about Theosophy without even buying a book, you yeah. can download books, yeah. you can read articles, Yeah. So, and I think it's now becoming like karma's in the dictionary, yeah. it's in the common vernacular, reincarnation is not considered so unusual. Yeah. And um, I know that you brought a, you were nice enough to bring a list of a few kind of books that have meant a lot to you personally. Um, so I was wondering if you could uh, give us the titles and uh, if you wanted to say a word about them. Um, okay, I'd be happy to. Okay. Uh, one of the books I've really enjoyed is H.P. Uh, Blavatsky's Key to Theosophy. And that was really one of the first books that I studied with a group. Oh, okay. And then a number of years later, I found this lovely book 
from uh. John Algio, Unlocking the Door. And I found this book very, very helpful. Okay. And, and Keith Theosophy and then John Algio's Unlocking the Door, those are sort of, they sort of cover the general um, area of theosophy and the vocabulary. That's true. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it's a question and answer, answer oh, okay. approach in the key to theosophy. And is, is that the part that appealed to you? Yes. The, the, the sort of easy mm -hmm. discussion? Okay. Easy discussion. Okay, so that's a nice way for somebody to be introduced mm -hmm. to theosophy too. I think it's a nice introductory class to okay. get into. Okay. And next on the uh, list? Next on the list was H.P. Blavatsky's uh, Letters to the American Conventions. Okay. And this book has been really important to me maybe in the last four or five years because I've gotten to hear Blavatsky's words to the American Conventions the last four years of her life to really see what she thought was important for us as theosophists to focus on. Is there any way you could summarize that for us? <laughs> What are well, some of her key? I think she wants us to keep theosophy alive in our hearts and not lose our way. She doesn't want us to be caught up in bickering and fighting and focusing on little things that are not important. That's... And she wants us to continue to practice brotherhood and, and be able to see the bigger picture. That's nice. Nice advice. Um, and then did you have another book on this? I, I have some other books that I really like. Okay. And um, one of them I would share with you is the Mahatma Letters to AP Senate, the sure. chronological edition. Sure. I've really enjoyed that book and just able to study a little bit of a letter at a time along with Joy Mills' commentary. Okay. Which came out, the uh, Reflections on the Ageless Wisdom. Yes. So, and uh, we are also having, as people probably know off our website, we do a webinar at, every Thursday at 12.30. You can also watch the recordings. But this is sort of getting to the heart of the matter, isn't it, these letters? Yes. Um, uh, you kind of want a guide, for sure, right? Yes. Going into these. But um, what do you find most fascinating about reading these letters? The letters, even though they were written a long time ago, they speak to us today. Yeah. And they're meaningful. It's like you have a teacher talking to you about, hey, wait a minute, this is important. I want you to focus on this. Yeah. And to me, in my little um, exposure to them that I've had, it is still amazes me that you have these uh, extremely realized, developed spiritual beings, and yet they still have a personality and uh, emotion and humor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. It's a very nice introduction to Theosophy by these incredibly developed uh, uh, Mahatmas who are also very human. And did you have another... Uh... Let's see. Oh, I had one of the first books I ever read as okay. a Theosophist. Okay. This Howard Murpet, uh, Hammer on the Mountain, The Life okay. of Henry Steele Alcott. Okay. And what did you like about that book? It was a narrative book with all the black and white pictures of the first time Theosophy the early founders oh. and I just found it fascinating yeah. you, know, you would hear all these Indian names yeah. and you would wonder who these gentlemen were and yeah. you that book really made theosophy come alive for okay. me it made it seem real yeah that these per people actually did exist and that this is how the society was founded and these are the folks who got together to make it happen you're right there at the beginning yes right in the middle of the action yeah. Okay, that sounds great. So that's probably one of my favorite books, in, um, uh, along with the inspirations from the Ancient Wisdom, which came out in 1999, which is the, the, the uh, At the Feet of the Master, Voice of the Silence, and Light on the Path. Okay. Oh. And I like that edition because it talks, in each book is introduced, and you're told the setting of the book. Now each, uh, so those three are together. They're all in an three. Addition. Okay. In an addition. Okay. And you like that especially because um... you can take it anywhere okay. in your suitcase, and you can meditate on something at the feet of the master or something from Voice of the Silence. So yeah. it's a little snippet. Yeah. You don't have to read a lot, but you can think a lot about oh, nice. what that means. Nice. Okay. So, very nice. So that's kind of my approach to theosophy is to take a little bit, to study of maybe just one or two books. Like I've got this Rada Bernier's book that oh, yeah. just came out in 09. It's uh, uh, The World Around Us. And it's all her Watchtower articles. 
okay. that go back from 1980 to 2007. Okay. And somebody gave me this. One of the members from the Theosophical Society in Detroit gave me this book as a gift. Yeah. So I've had it for about a couple of months. Yeah. And I've enjoyed it a lot because you're getting words of wisdom from Rhonda Bernier, the international president, and you're getting her philosophy of life, you're getting all her insights, and it touches you on a daily basis. It's, it's very uplifting. It's very uplifting, mm -hmm. probably challenging too, yes. knowing her. Um, oh, I've got a terrible question for you right now. What do you think it means for somebody to grow spiritually? <laughs> I think life will teach you along the journey I don't think you necessarily have to look for it and avidly search for it. I think the lessons that show up for you will teach you to become a more spiritual person, particularly with your home duties and responsibilities. Yeah, that makes sense. That you, if you're a parent, then you are the best parent you can be. If you're a son or daughter, you try to be kind to your parents and loving to them. Mm. And also du duties you have with your job or yeah. civic duties, responsibilities in the community. Very nice. Um, and did you have any other books from your bibliography? Uh, that's pretty much it. I think those are the the books that have spoken to me the most yeah. in my in my um, career of being a theosophist, my time of being a theosophist. And I would hope as I continue that I will grow, that I will have more chances to read, to study. I'd like to go to Cotona and take some classes out in Ojai, California. Yeah. And be able to study for a couple of weeks at a time. That sounds nice. Um, in a laid-back atmosphere mm -hmm. and with great teachers around you. Um, so you've already given us great uh, a list of books for new people. But do you have any kind of a general statement you'd say to somebody who's new? This is quite a lot that, that society has to offer as far as teaching. What would you recommend to a, a new person, generally, who comes to the society and sees all this happening? I think that person would have to maybe take some introductory classes. Okay. Like maybe even John Algio's Introduction to Theosophy. Yeah. You start with some of the basic teachings. Okay. That's what I would recommend to a new person coming on board, or maybe somebody who's come here for the first time. But I also think some people who come to Alcott have a, a diverse background. Yeah. So maybe some people would want to come for the Mahatma Letters class, or they'd want to take some of these classes, the, these webinar classes. So maybe some students are more advanced, and that might not be where they need to go. So I think I'd try to talk to the person first and kind of try to figure out where they are. But somebody may be very new to Theosophy, I would say John Algeo's introductory uh, Theosophy class. Okay. Well, that's good advice. So I want to thank you for, uh, for your time. Uh, we Just conversationally in passing, you mentioned to me, we were talking about meditation and children, and you mentioned Tahik Nahat Han says a goal should be to um, kind of always have that little bit of peaceful space in your heart, no matter how frantic things get around you. And just in the little time I've known you, you seem to have that. You seem to emanate that peace. So um, <laughs> you're spreading good vibes. So thank you again for your time and for your sacrifice on the board. You're your welcome, Dan. I've enjoyed it very much. Oh, good. Thank you.